shall we begin? Let the games begin. All right, all right, all right. A new age has begun. An age of freedom. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? This is the chopper! This is going to be quite a ride. <laughs> and welcome to the Movie Pit Podcast. I am your host, Christian. Thank you very much for joining me on the podcast this week. It is a big week this week. Uh, we're not going to waste any time. But uh, before we even get to that, um, tomorrow, Saturday, because uh, obviously podcast is going up uh, today on Friday, uh, will be our five-year anniversary for the podcast. Uh, it is, I have been doing this podcast for five years, and that is absolutely mind-boggling to me uh that i've been doing this uh podcast for for five years it doesn't even feel like it's been five years but apparently it has and uh i am very happy that i've been doing this podcast uh, i've had some ups and downs with the podcast i've had some things that uh clearly i wanted more from the podcast um but uh i'm happy with what i've been able to put out uh obviously i could be a little bit more happier, but uh, I'm happy with what I've been able to put out because uh, I never thought that I would have this opportunity to do a podcast like this and have an outlet to to, to talk about this and even the, the chance and the opportunity to do a podcast like this. So uh, this is really cool. This is really awesome that I've been doing it for five years. And anyone who's been listening, whether you're new to the podcast, whether you've been listening, I, I doubt anyone's been listening for all five years. But if you if you have, hello, thank you. Thank you for maybe that one or two people that have been doing that but thank you i appreciate that and i appreciate everything and hopefully uh you know uh i keep going on maybe another five years who knows uh probably not another five years i'm gonna be honest probably not (laughs) probably not another five years but uh who knows maybe i don't know but uh thank you for everyone who has supported the podcast whenever you started listening and whenever you joined because uh obviously if there was no there was nothing there then uh, there's no reason for me to continue to do this so uh thank you for for everyone who is uh who has listened and joined everything that the podcast has put out so all right uh enough mushy stuff let's move on to this week's movie news item like i said we have a lot of movie news items and i am recording this on actually friday i usually you know tend to record this a little bit uh some of this on thursday but i'm recording this on friday so the podcast may be up a little later than usual but that also helped out because uh, there was a big movie news item that dropped, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we'll, we'll not a little bit. We'll obviously talk about that when uh, when we get to it later on the podcast. But before we get to all that, uh, we do have to talk about some movie news items that came out after the podcast came out last week. So let's get right to it. The first one is that Warner Brothers has set a release date for their action sci-fi thriller *Reminiscence*. The movie stars Hugh Jackman as Nick Berenson, a private investigator for the mind or of the mind rather, who helps clients access lost memories. His life has changed forever when he takes on a new client, uh, May, played by Rebecca Ferguson, only to discover a violent conspiracy and ultimately have to answer the question, how far would you go to hold on to the ones you love? The movie will come out on September 3rd, same day in theaters and HBO Max, as usual. It's also directed by Lisa Joy, one of the writers and executive producers on HBO's Westworld, who will be making her feature directorial debut. She also directed uh, an episode of Westworld, and she's bringing along her co-star from Westworld, one of the stars, I should say, of Westworld, Fanny Newton, to the cast. So, there you go. Uh, There's that. The next movie news item that came out after the podcast came out last week. Lionsgate has found their leads for their adaptation of Judy Bloom's beloved novel, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. The leads are Abby Ryder Fort, uh, Fortson, who was the little girl in uh, Ant-Man, the daughter, and Rachel McAdams. Uh, Fortson will, of course, play Margaret, and Adams, or Mick Adams, I should say, will play her mother. The movie will be directed and written by Kelly Furman Craig, who did the excellent the Edge of Seventeen. If you've not seen The Edge of Seventeen, I highly recommend that. Uh, with Bloom acting herself as a producer. So she will be a producer on the movie. In fact, Bloom signed off on the adaptation after Freeman Craig flew down to meet her in Florida. And when it came to pitch the movie to studios, Lionsgate reportedly transformed a conference room into an 11-year-old girl's bedroom, including 
uh, which included pictures of executives as 11 year as 11 year olds, all in an effort to woo the director and Bloom. And obviously it worked because Lionsgate will be releasing the movie. Next movie news item, a very cool and exciting team up, if I do say so myself, is happening. Tom Hardy is set to produce and star in Gareth Evans' new action movie, Havoc. Evans, by the way, the director of the Raid movies. The log line reads like this, after a drug deal gone wrong, a bruised detective, Tom Hardy, must fight his way through a criminal underworld to save a politician's estranged son. Son, wow, that that apparently I can't say that word. Uh, while unraveling a deep web of corruption and conspiracy that enthralls his entire city, Hardy, uh, of course, had Capone released earlier this year. He also has Venom: Let There Be Carnage coming out later this year. Maybe uh, we don't know if that's going to get pushed back or not. Evans uh, hasn't had isn't working on any new movies, at least from what I can tell. But he does have his TV series Gangs of London, which is very very good if you haven't checked it out. Uh, it's on AMC Plus. Although you can get AMC Plus like a week or like a month free um, if you have Prime Video. So I recommend that just so you can watch Gangs of London. Because Gangs of London, very, very good. Uh, no word yet on a release date or production. But uh, hopefully that's sooner rather than later. Because uh, I think that's a really cool team up. Uh, Paramount Pictures, which we will also talk about later on the podcast, is nearing a deal to hire Edgar Wright to direct a new adaptation of The Running Man. The original, which came out in 1987, of course, starred Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was based off the futuristic novel by Stephen King, which he actually published under his pseudonym, Richard Bachman. Uh, Michael Bacall, who actually wrote Edgar's uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, uh, and he also wrote 21 and 22 Jump Street, will write the script, and reports say that his script will be more faithful to the novel than the original movie was. I don't know what the change, I forgot to look up what the changes were from the novel to the to the book, but uh, apparently there was enough of them that they wanted to be more faithful to the book this time around. The movie will also be produced by Simon Kinburn. He was one of the producers, one of the mega producers, really, of all the X-Men films over at 20th Century Fox, when it was still 20th Century Fox. Um, he will be producing through his genre films banner, and actually it was Kinburn who brought the idea of redoing the movie to Paramount and Edgar Wright. Uh, interestingly enough, Wright said back in 2017 that if he could remake any movie, he would actually choose The Running Man. So this is all kind of uh, this is all kind of just uh, worked worked in Edgar Wright's favor. Uh, I recently saw The Running Man earlier this year again for the first time in a long time, and um, yeah, that that I mean, obviously not a lot of things hold up on on those early, on those uh, sci-fi 80s movies, but um, the idea of Running Man, the whole concept of it. Uh, very true to today even. And, uh, yeah, that could, that could definitely use a, uh, a retool, uh, kind of an update, a fresh, uh, a, f a more fresh update, uh, with today's, you know, technology and today's society, which is not all that different from what the running man, uh, kind of, kind of had. So, uh, I'm all for this and I love, I love Edgar Wright. I love everything he's done. So I'm, I'm all, I'm all for this. And finally, uh, the last bit of movie news items that came out after the podcast went up last week. It's actually a pretty big one. Uh, the Flash movie has added a relatively newcomer, Sasha Callie, to their uh, to their movie. She would be playing Supergirl. Uh, Callie is notably known for starring in the soap opera The Young and the Restless. She actually earned a Daytime Emmy nomination, so that's pretty cool. She also co-starred in a YouTube limited series called Socially Awkward, if you're familiar with the YouTube um, shows that they have up there. Uh, director, director Andy Muschietti said this about the casting, saying, quote, I saw more than 400 auditions, the U.S., Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, Colombia. The talent pool was truly amazing. It was very hard to make a decision, but we finally found an actress who was, des who was destined to play the role. They, being uh, DC, released a video of Muschietti telling Callie that she got the role, and it was just really cool um, to see her reaction, um, when, when she got the role, I thought I, I, it's, it's a really cool, heartwarming video if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, for those that don't know, Supergirl is Superman's cousin, uh, Kara Zor-El. Uh, she was previously, she was previously portrayed on film in the 1984 movie Supergirl by, uh, Helen Slater, who I think, uh, if I'm remembering this correctly, uh, I haven't watched the show in a while, but I think she actually plays the, um, mother, or at least the, human mother um of uh Car of carl zorrell in the cw show i think that's actually her from what i can remember uh and like i mentioned cw uh there is a show called supergirl cw she's played by melissa beloit um, benoist in the movie 
or in the TV show, sorry, I'm, I'm all over the place now. Uh, but there's that. Uh, this move, Kelly's casting, will be the first time that Supergirl will be played by a Latina actress, which is really, 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 really cool. It's a huge win, uh, being a uh, Latino myself. Uh, the movie itself, we'll see Ezra Miller return as Barry Allen, a.k.a. The Flash, along with Ben Affleck's Batman and Michael Keaton's Batman, because, yes, it will involve the multiverse. The script is being written by Birds of Prey writer Christina Hodson and has a release date of November 4th, 2022. So uh, that's really cool. Uh, again, go watch that video of her getting her getting announced playing Supergirl. It's, it's really, it's actually really, really, um, really cool to see her reaction. So that's really cool. All right, moving on. Uh, those are all the movie news items that came out after the podcast came out last week. Let us move on to trailer talk. We have two trailers. And we're going to talk about the first one is for the Netflix movie Army of the Dead. Uh, it was it's called a trailer. It felt really more like a teaser, but maybe I'm just being nitpicky. Uh, that is directed by Zack Snyder in his long in the works zombie heist movie. Yes, zombie heist movie. Uh, Army of the Dead follows a group of mercenaries who are hired to go into Las Vegas, which is filled with zombies, to pull off the greatest heist of all time. The movie has a pretty big cast and some notable names uh, in there. Some of the ones that I think most people will notice is Dave Bautista, uh, Omari Hardwick, Theo Rossi, Garen Dillon Hunt, uh, Tig Notaro, who actually replaces Chris D'Elia after allegations uh, against him came out. Uh, also in the, in the movie is uh, Hiroki Sonata, aka Scorpion, in the new Sub Zero uh, in the new Mortal Kombat movie. Um, I have a Sub Zero Funko Pop in front of me. That's just why I mixed them up. Uh, but anyway. Uh, Army of the Dead also has a release date of May 21st. They actually announced that uh, this week before they announced or before they released the uh, the trailer. Um, I don't know how I feel about the teaser. I didn't, I didn't feel like we got enough. Uh, I mean, you get the basic gist of it, uh, of what it is. And it's nice to see uh, Zack Snyder go back to the zombie genre. Obviously, Dawn of the Dead pretty much made him. I, I would say that Dawn of the Dead made him a household name for nerds, for like movie nerds like us who, you know, pay attention to directors and stuff. Obviously, it was Man of Steel that probably made him uh, uh, more of a household name or 300 if you want to go that if you want to do that, too. But, um, yeah, his his uh, remake of Dawn of the Dead was very good. I think it's one of the better remake if there was like a list of good remakes dawn of the dead would have to be on that list at least in my my opinion but uh but yeah uh the teaser it looks fine i mean you know um again there just wasn't that much there to really kind of make a, a valid opinion. i mean it looks cool i mean anything that Zack snyder looks cool because obviously he's a very visual director but when it comes to like storytelling and stuff it's obviously uh he's a mixed bag of, but um look wise it looks looks cool and obviously it looks like vegas is just filled to the brim with zombies all over the place so we can probably expect a lot of people to die because there's a big group of mercenaries and um a lot of zombie action so yeah the next trailer we're going to talk about is for pixar pixar released the first trailer for the new movie luca the movie follows luca voiced by jacob tremblay and alberto voiced by uh jack dylan grazer he was uh in it he was also um in shazam uh who seem like two average boys eager to have an adventure while in italy for the summer but they are harboring a secret about who they really are whenever luca and alberto come into contact with water they turn into their true selves sea creatures who take human form while on land um it's a very very cool uh nice little short trailer they they announced it's very bright like seriously this thing is super bright it is packed to the brim with colors and it's it looks amazing it's it's pixar obviously you know pixar's never really done wrong not really you know you look at their track record you know that they, they've done a really good job so uh luca is somewhat based on um the director enrico uh Casarosa's time as a child in italy he said that he based alberto off someone that he got to know uh as well so it seems like kind of a real personal film for him as well which uh which which always you know leads to better films because you know the director has some attachment to the to the product that's going to be really it's going to be even better but uh yeah uh Maya Rudolph and Jim Caffigan were also part of the voice cast they will actually be the voices of Luca's parents and Luca opens on June 18th like I mentioned it's very it's it's it it looks great i mean it looks like uh luca and Roberto also have another friend uh who may be a human it doesn't look like she's actually a sea creature uh, unless they're hiding that in the movie but um yeah this trailer is really 
it's really it's it's a nice it's a nice way to introduce you know this this world that they're doing and and stuff and they do show them as sea creatures in the trailer so the synopsis isn't spoiler because it's in the trailer itself but i think it's really cool all right, uh, so let's move on to, I'm moving very, very quickly because, again, we have a lot of movie news to get to. Uh, so forgive me if I'm moving a little quickly, uh, although I tend to move a little quickly anyway. But anyway, let us move on to this week's bigger movie news items. We're going to start off with Quickfire, which, of course, for those who are either new to the podcast or just need a reminder, Quickfire, uh, usually movie news items that are very self-explanatory, but they're still not was blah, they're still, I'm going to leave that in. There are still noteworthy movie news items, uh, because of the people involved or because I just want to, you know, highlight them because I just feel like, uh, they deserve a shout out. So the first Quickfire movie news item is a new adaptation of the great Gatsby is in the works. And this time it is an animated form. Uh, there's also a TV series in the works, but this is a movie show, so we're not going to talk about that one. Um, so the new animated Great Gatsby adaptation will be directed by William Joyce, who directed the animated film Epic. I don't know if people remember that. I think it kind of got lost in the wayside. Uh, it's actually pretty it's pretty decent if you want to go check that out. Um, so he will direct the movie. The duo, uh, the writer of the movie will be uh, Brian Selznick. I think that's how you pronounce the last name. Uh, he wrote the, the animated movie uh, Wonderstruck, which came out... I believe last year. Uh, I did not watch it, but I heard some mixed things about it. Uh, so the duo will work with DN, DNEG Feature Animation, which was formerly known as Double Negative until they changed their uh, their actual title. Uh, mostly known for, they're pretty much mostly a visual effects company doing effects for pretty much a lot of big movies in Hollywood. Uh, just to give you a few examples, Inception, Ex Machina, uh, the last Harry Potter movie. Like the like Deathly Hollows, not Fantastic Beasts movies, uh, the Dark Knight trilogy, the one with Chris, the Christopher Nolan movies, uh, Children of Men, Interstellar, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. They also did some effects work on the upcoming Godzilla vs Kong. So they're obviously a very big special effects company, and now it looks like they're getting into the actual movie making business uh, uh, of of it all. Uh, this will be the fifth film adaptation fifth film adaptation of F C Scott Fitz, or F Scott Fitzgerald's classic novel. Uh, the first one was in 1926, which apparently has been lost in time. There's not a lot of copies of that. Uh, a 1949 film also was also released, a 1974 film with Robert Redford playing The Great Gatsby. And, of course, for all you youngins out there, the 2013 adaptation with Leonardo DiCaprio playing The Great Gatsby. Shazam! Fury of the Gods has added a newcomer to the scene in Rachel Ziegler. Um, she will be playing a mystery role. Ziegler will be seen in Steven Spielberg's West Side Story, uh, which will actually be her first uh, starring role. Uh, so this will most likely be her second starring role. Uh, she did give a little response saying she would be playing a key role, although what that key role actually is is obviously up in the air. Uh, David F. Sandberg will return to direct along with, I'm assuming, most of the cast from the first movie, at least the main cast. Uh, so there, that's uh, that's your small, that's a very small tidbit, but it's uh, pretty noteworthy in, in its own right. Uh, Ryan Gosling has signed on to star in The Actor for director Duke Johnson, who directed... Um, Amo Lisa, if anyone remembers that movie. The actor is based off a Donald E. Westlake novel titled Memory. The book, a hard-boiled noir, follows New York actor Paul Cole, who is beaten and left for dead before waking up with no memory in a mysterious small, time, small town in 1950s Ohio. As he struggles to get back, uh, back, back home, Paul must piece together and reclaim the life and identity he lost. Johnson will also co-write the script, and apparently, at one point, Aaron Taylor Johnson was circling the project, but obviously things didn't work out and now they have ryan gosling so there is that uh halle berry is working with netflix again on the sci-fi thriller mothership berry will produce the movie which sees her as a fearless woman whose husband mysteriously vanishes but when she discovers a strange extra terrestrial extraterrestrial object beneath her home she and her children set out to find him and uncover the truth behind his disappearance which may involve the cia the movie will be written and directed by matt charman who uh was one of the writers on bridge of spies and is expected and is expected to start production this spring like i mentioned barry uh is working with netflix again because barry will have her directorial debut titled bruise set to come out sometime this year on the platform which will see barry play a former mma fighter struggling to regain custody of her son and restart her athletic career so uh if you remember that big netflix trailer that came out that said they were going to be releasing a movie every year she was a part of that trailer and they actually show a little bit of footage in there so there you go Steven Sodenberg, uh, the director of the Ocean's Eleven movies and um, 
unsane and contagion will direct Kimmy in all capital letters. Kimmy is in all capital letters. With Zoe Kravitz set to lead. The film will center on an agoraphobic tech worker, played by Kravitz, who discovers recorded evidence of a violent crime during an ordinary data stream review and tries reporting it up the chain of command at her company. Met with resistance and bureaucracy, she will have to bring the thing, she will have to do the thing she fears the most, leave her apartment. David Coep, who has written films like Jurassic Park and the first Mission Impossible movie, Spider-Man, even uh, the new mummy movie which i don't necessarily blame him for that but well i blame him a little i blame him a little bit for that uh he wrote the script but no word yet on when the movie will go into production this is part of sodenberg's overall deal with hbo and hbo max that he signed earlier this year which will see him make films for the studio for or at least you know have his movies uh come out on the platform for the next three years he uh, already has a crime thriller called No Sun Move, which is set to come out sometime uh, later this year or next year. I, I don't think they've started filming that, so probably next year. Uh, and they also released the comedy drama Let Him, uh, Let Them All Talk, which came out in December, which if you want to go watch that, you can. But uh, yeah, and Zoe Kravitz, of course, will next be seen in The Batman. Uh, I don't know if she's in starring in anything else before that, but the next big thing that I think all, all, of, us all, all of us will probably see her in is in The Batman. Uh, moving on, John M. Chu, the director of Crazy Rich Asians and the upcoming In the Heights, will direct The Great Chinese Art Heist, which is based on a G uh, GQ article by Alex W. Palmer. The article follows a slew of museum art robberies that occurred in Europe, in which the Chin or in which, rather, I should say, um, Chinese antiquities were stolen, chiefly those that came from the country's old summer palace, which was raided in 1860 by French Schol Oh wow, I can't say that word. Soldiers. Uh, no one, no one knows who I can't. Nope, no recovering from that. No one knows who the thieves are, but. Uh, the works of art did always end up back in China. The article did pose the question whether there is some sort of uh, coordinated effort to reclaim Chinese art. Apparently, Cho jumped at the opportunity to do the project, and the studio Warner Brothers are looking for a writer at the moment. George Clooney and Julia Roberts are reteaming for the romantic comedy Tickets to Paradise. The movie will be directed by Ol Parker, who directed Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, and we'll see Clooney and Roberts as, this, as a divorced couple that team up and travel to Bali to stop their daughter from making the same mistake they made 25 years ago. Production is expected to start later uh, later this year. Um, no, word on it, no word yet on when, but it is going to be later this year. This is pretty cool. Uh, Clooney and Roberts obviously worked together on the Oceans movies. They also did uh, Money Monster together, the, one that, the movie that was directed by Jodie Foster. They came out, I don't know, about three years ago now. Um, it was it was fine, but uh, this is really interesting to see them, you know, kind of playing a divorced couple, uh, which is pretty cool. So there you go. Moving on to the next movie news item, uh, a fourth Jeepers Creepers movie is be uh, has apparently already filmed. <laughs> Just <laughs> it's already been filmed. Uh, the movie is called Jeepers Creepers Reborn. Uh, and has a release date. The movie was bought by Screen Media this week and will come out later this fall. No exact release date, but it will come out this year. The fourth movie is directed by Timo, I'm going to butcher his last name, uh, Vio Vinsola. That might not be right. Uh, he directed the Iron Sky movies, the one where the Nazis you know, have a secret base on the moon. Uh, if you remember those movies, they came out uh, a handful of years ago. And is part of a planned new trilogy. Now, here is the log line for this crazy fourth <laughs> Jeepers Creepers movie. The film, follow, uh, the film unfolds as the Horror Hound Film Festival holds its first ever event in Louisiana, where it attracts hundreds of geeks, freaks, and diehard horror fans from far and wide. Yes, this is how the log line says it among them is fanboy chase and his girlfriend laney who is forced to come along for the ride but as the event but as the event approaches laney begins to experience unexplained premonitions and disturbing visions associated with the town's past and in particular local legend urban myth the creeper as that just sounds wrong as the festival occur, or as the festival arrives and blood-soaked entertainment builds to a frenzy. Laney believes that something unearthly has been summoned, and she ha and she is at the center of it. Uh, like I said, the movie has already filmed, but no word yet on the cast, unless they announce the cast later with a trailer. But I'm just going to say that if it's already filmed, uh, and they haven't announced the cast with this announcement, it's probably going to be filled with a bunch of people we don't know. Uh, so yes, there is a third Jeepers Creepers movie uh, that came out. So pretty much no fanfare, especially after people found out. Or actually, especially after more people found out that uh, the director of the Cheapers Creepers movies uh, was sent to jail for uh, child 
pornography. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's probably not a good thing. Uh, and now, they obviously, looks like they want to reboot Jeepers Creepers for some. I don't know. Um, there's, I don't know how you continue that, but I don't know how to go forward from that. But uh, new director, probably new writer. They probably have no involvement with uh, the original director at all. So I mean, if they want to reboot Jeepers Creepers, I mean, the movie itself lends itself to Jeepers Creepers. I mean, if you want to follow the same mythology from the old movie into this movie, you know, it's every twenty three years for twenty three days he he comes out and he you know, kills people and eats people. So, I mean, you know, that, that just lends itself right there for, for reboots and, and sequels and stuff. So, um, I don't know if I'll check it out. Maybe I'll just wait for the trailer, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, moving on. Uh, we only got, we got two more quick fire movie news items to, to get through. Uh, Guy Ritchie is about to wrap up on his latest film, Five Eyes with Jason Statham, but he's already eyeing up his next project for Paramount Pictures. Uh, Paramount has hired Ritchie to direct the World War II adaptation, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Yes, that is the name of the book by Damian Lewis. Uh, the book was actually written or released, I should say published, back in 2015, which is when the studio, or at least that's when the studio picked up the, uh, the rights for the rights for the book. Uh, the book takes place in 1939 when Winston Churchill decided to fight the Germans with Britain's first black ops unit. Uh, so you can expect how this movie is going to work out. On top of all this, Jerry Bruckheimer will produce the movie with Arash Amel, who wrote A Private War, which I have not seen, but I've heard some pretty good things about it, having written the latest draft of the script. So there you go. I'm all game for more Guy Ritchie. Uh, I, I think Guy Ritchie has uh, kind of made a comeback a little bit. The gentleman was uh, was very was very good. Um, I was pro- I'm probably one of the handful of people that really like or that really liked from the beginning uh, Man from Uncle. But uh, you know we'll, we'll see how this works out. All right, so this is the final quick fire movie news item. Uh, Netflix will adapt the best selling novel I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter, and has found its director and a fitting one in America Ferreira who will make her feature film directorial debut. Author of the novel, Eric Sanchez, will be an executive producer on the movie, and the movie will be written by Linda Yvette Chavez, who is the co-writer of the Netflix series uh, Gentrified, which uh, is supposed to be very popular on the platform. Uh, I've seen a few episodes because my sisters and my mom watch it, and I kind of walk in on them watching it every now and then. And, uh, it, it, I mean, from what I've seen, it's it's pretty good. It also you know touches on issues and stuff, but um, from what I've seen, it's actually it, it seemed like a pretty good show. Anyway, uh, the book was released back in 2017, and I believe it's actually been made into um, into a play. I think my sister saw like a show, uh, a play, uh, like a show adaptation of it um, here in in the city, um, Chicago, by the way. Uh, but follow. But anyone who doesn't know any anything about the the book, uh, it follows a story. It follows a story of Julia Reyes, the precocious and strong willed teenage daughter of first-generation Mexican immigrants. She often clashes with her more traditional parents who wish she were more like their sister, or more like her sister, Olga, the platonic ideal of a Mexican daughter. However, when Olga is killed in a tragic accident, it is up to Julia to hold her family together. Took a turn, didn't it? You didn't expect that. Um, but uh, uh, I've heard nothing but some really good things about the uh, about the book. I have, I have not read the book, but I've heard some very good things about it. And America Ferrera, obviously from uh superstore and for whatever reason superstore is the only thing that comes to my mind uh she was in the tv adaptation of ugly betty that was years ago but she was in that she's also but she's been in a bunch of other stuff i just for whatever reason superstore comes to my mind because i watch superstore um it's a tv show on nbc for those you for those that don't know but um this is pretty cool uh i know a lot of people who really like that book uh and i again i've heard nothing but great things about that book so and it looks like you know, they're not going to be like, oh, we're going to hire a white person. Nope, they're hiring all Mexicans or all Latinos, I, I should say. So that's pretty cool. All right, that's your quick fire movie news items. Let us move on to this week's big movie news items of the week. All right, we're going to start off after some lively jokes that came out online. Tom Holland, Zendaya, and Jacob Batalone revealed the official title of Spider-Man 3, and it is Spider-Man No Way Home. And the movie will officially come out on Christmas or December 25th for all those who don't celebrate Christmas. Or at least around that Christmas time. Uh, We don't know too much about the movie despite all the crazy news bits that have been coming out. Like old Spider-Man actors and villains appearing in the movie. Although, you know, they've kind of tried to downplay that and say that's 
none of that is actually some of those news items that have come out are not actually true so we'll have to wait and see on that but we do know that dr strange will appear in the movie uh in whatever shape he's in after you know before or after wandavision and dr strange and the multiverse of madness on top of all this while promoting his new film cherry tom holland did reveal that no way home will be his last contractual appearance for sony pictures as spider-man but holland did say that he would be back in a heartbeat if sony asked him to we'll have to see how uh how that plays out uh no way home i'm not you know i'm not i'm not opposed to the title i i do hope i, I do want to see the context of it uh of, of why it's called no way home but um title's fine i, I don't hate it yeah uh, so moving on um let's move on from marvel to dc dc is moving forward with their blue beetle adaptation and now have a director uh angel manuel soto who directed charm city kings which you can watch on netflix is set to direct the movie for uh, by a script by gareth dunnett all seer who uh what he wrote uh miss bala a couple years ago uh the movie will also be the first latino superhero um which is uh again being a latino very very cool uh the character has been around for a while uh, i was all the way back since 1939 uh but soto will be working with the incarnation of the character that came out from um the infinity crisis event in 2006 all my comic book people will know what that means. Uh, Jaime Reyes is a working class teenager. For those who don't know anything about Blue Beetle, Jaime, uh, Jaime Reyes is a working class teenager with no connection to the character before. The origin of the character involves finding a Blue Beetle scarab on the way home from school. At night, the scarab comes to life and attaches itself to Reyes' spine, giving him a suit of armor that provides enhanced speed and strength as well as abilities like weapons and shields. Production is aiming to start this fall, so it looks like they're moving very, very forward. Are moving very, very, uh, very forward and fast with their Blue Beetle adaptation. No word yet on when, where that will come out. If it would be in theaters, or it will be, or if it will go straight to uh, HBO Max. Moving on, uh, Spike Lee and Stephen Bristol, who directed the Netflix film See You Yesterday, uh, which Lee also produced, are teaming up again with Netflix to release uh, uh, a movie called Gordon Hemingway and the Realm of Cthulhu. Yes. Cthulhu, that Cthulhu. Uh, Lee will once again produce and Bristol will direct. Bristol is directing from an original screenplay by Hank Woon, who I, I looked him up and he apparently has written a few of the Asylum movies. If anyone knows what the uh, the Asylum are, they they basically do knockoff versions of popular movies. So he has written a few Asylum movies, uh, but he will be, uh, Bristol will be doing some additional revisions um, by him by Woon and by uh, Federica Bailey, who co-wrote See You Yesterday with Bristol. So uh, obviously putting his own spin on on everything that's going on. Uh, the movie is set in the 20s in East Africa and centers on a roguish black American gunslinger, Gordon Hem Hemingway, who teams up with an elite warrior princess of Ethiopia to rescue their kidnapped red regiment, or regent, I should say, from an agent evil. Obviously, probably Cthulhu or something along the lines of Cthulhu. Um, so that's really cool. I, I don't know how they're going to go forward with that, but uh, I, I'm very interested in seeing a Spike Lee produced Cthulhu movie. Uh, I'm not going to lie. So we'll, we'll have to see uh, how that works out. Obviously, we got something of a Lovecraftian Cthulhu like adaptation already with Lovecraft, uh, Lovecraft Country. But, you know, obviously seeing this uh, will be very different. Moving on. A feature adaptation of R.R. Martin's short story the Lo In the Lost Lands is finally getting made, and it's found its two leads and a director. Dave Bautista and Mila Jovovich are set to lead the movie with director... Yes, you guessed it. If Mila Jovovich is involved, you can probably assume who's directing her husband, Paul W.S. Anderson. The short story involves a queen who is desperate to fulfill her love, so she hires a powerful sorceress named Grey. I don't know how to. I don't know how they would pronounce that last name. Ailes, I think maybe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, who would be played by Mila Jovovich, and sends her on a ghostly and sends her into the ghostly wilderness of the Lost Lands, where she and her guide, a drifter, Boyce, played by Dave Batista, must outfight man and demon. Uh, coincidentally, Jovovich was actually in talks to appear in a previous incarnation, which was being worked on back in 2015, but of course, obviously never got off the ground, and now it is. This sounds pretty cool. I've never read, uh, I've actually never read anything that George, uh, or that, yeah, George R.R. Martin has ever done. Um, so, uh, even, like, the Game of Thrones books, I never read any of that. But, uh, this seems kind of interesting. Maybe I'll, I'll go on my way and try to find try to find it uh i like batista anything he's in so there's that i do like mila jovovich um 
you know, even in the things that, you know, even what most of us know her from is from Resident Evil. I don't know why that was so hard to get out. But, uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I guess, you know, I look forward to it. I haven't watched Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter yet. I'm actually watching it this weekend. So I'll get back to you on that. Uh, moving on to something very exciting. Uh, these last bits of movie news, news items are actually very, very exciting. Uh, so Neil Blomkamp, after years of teasing, has finally revealed that a sequel to his hit sci-fi film, District 9, is finally happening. Uh, or at the very least, the script is finally happening. Uh, Blomkamp revealed this uh, on Twitter, saying that he and the star of the first movie, Charlotte Copley and Terry Tatchell, who helped Blomkamp write the first movie along with his other film, Chappie, are working on the script. And the reason, um, I know a lot of people are like, you know, why, why hasn't there been a sequel to District 9? Um, the reason for the wait is because he admitted back uh, a, couple, a few years ago, more, probably more than a few, I think it was 2017, something along those lines, uh, that he that um, he didn't want to make a sequel just for the sake of making a sequel, which obviously we know studios do all the time. He wanted it to be... Uh, thematic. He wanted the the same thematic renaissance that the first movie did. Those are his words. Uh, so he obviously didn't want to rush into it. And of course, he was doing other things as well because uh, he kept himself busy after District Nine. Obviously, he went on to do Elysium with Matt Damon, which was not met with a lot of fanfare. Uh, then he went on to do Chappie, which met not met with a lot of fanfare either. But there are some fans in that movie, and he attempted to make a sequel to Aliens. And that was before Ridley Scott came uh, came in and was like, no, 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 I'm still making Alien movies. I want to make Alien Covenant. And then, you know, obviously, uh, 20th Century Fox went with Ridley Scott instead of Neil Blumkamp. Uh, then he wanted to do a reboot of RoboCop, but that ended up going in a different direction entirely. So he dropped out of that as well. Uh, he finally made Oat Studio, which is where he releases a bunch of short films. Uh, they're all online if you want to go check them out. They're very, very good. And uh, Blumkamp has uh, been also working on a sci-fi film called Inferno, which apparently he was working on before the pandemic shut everything down. And then he switched, I guess, to another movie called Demonic. Uh, but there's no updates on either one of those projects yet. But uh, all that's all that's said and done. District 10 is finally, I don't know if he's going to call it District 10, but all the sequel to District 9 is happening and it's being worked on. So um, don't expect it very, very soon. But, you know, at least they're writing a script for it. And I think... Um, that's you know that that's good enough for that's good enough for me honestly district nine was probably one of the best sci-fi movies that have come out in a long time when it came back out in 2009 um i honestly have not revisited i i think the last time i saw it was maybe a handful of years ago uh i saw it for the first time then and it still kind of held up so i probably had to watch it again to see if that's still the case but uh, i'm excited i i really am i think plum camp kind of got the short end of the stick because people just didn't like Elysium and didn't like Chappie. I don't know if it's because they just wanted him to do a District 10 movie right away. And then he did all this other stuff and they're like, no, we want that. We want District, we want, you know, District 10. Where's District 10? And, and he was just like, no, I'm just going to go and do my own thing. And he did. And I mean, it's worked. Old Studio is very, very good if you want to go check that out. All right, moving on. Uh, Shudder, the horror streaming service, has now the rights to the amusement park, which is a newly restored lost film by the late George A. Romero, uh, which they plan on releasing this summer. The movie was recently discovered by the uh, George A. Romero Foundation, and they restored it in 4K, no less, under the direction of producer uh, Suzanne Romero, uh, 46 years after its completion. The movie is not a horror movie, so at least per se it's not a horror movie, uh, at least from the comments made by Suzanne Romero, so prepare yourself for that. The film follows an elderly man who finds himself disoriented and increasingly isolated as the pains, tragedies, and humiliations of aging in America are illustrated by his journey among roller coasters and chaotic crowds. The film is seen as an allegory, as much as pretty much every other Romero movie, about the, about the nightmarish realities of growing older and as a snapshot of the filmmaker's early artistic capability and style. Um, this is really cool. Uh, you know, I, I don't think anyone really knew that he had made this movie. At least I, I didn't know he had made this movie. But apparently uh, the movie, had, someone had gotten their hands on it, or at least had known that they had made a movie or, or this movie was had existed and um the, it's kind of so it's kind of it's kind of been out there but not you know this you know not not widely known 
but uh the fact that they restore this movie in 4k again no less and they're going to be releasing it on shutter is amazing i think this is really cool i think this is really really cool george A. romero obviously the master pretty much of the zombie genre there wouldn't be a zombie genre if it wasn't for J- george A. romero uh at least not as popular um anyway if it wasn't for george A. romero so i'm really looking forward to seeing this again just off the synopsis alone it seems interesting but uh, it should be interesting to kind of see how that plays out in a, in a full movie yeah and they kind of released a poster too that was out there so if you want to go check that out you can as well so let's move on from that. A director change has happened for the adaptation of the video game movie The Division, which will stream on Netflix. Apparently, I think I missed the fact that the Vision, the Division movie was going to Netflix because originally I think it was just, oh, we're making the movie. We don't know where it's going to come out, but we're making the movie. I guess uh, Netflix bought it up uh, sometime and I just missed that completely. Anyway, anyway, originally David Leach, uh, of course, the director of the first John Wick or the co-director of the first John Wick movie, Hobbs and Shaw, Deadpool 2, Atomic Blonde. Um, he was attached to direct a movie since 2018, uh, when it was kind of when it was initially announced. But this week, Leach has stepped down as a director. He will stay on as producer of the movie, so he's still attached, but he's not directing. And has opened the director's chair up to Rawson Marshall Thurber, who has directed uh, Skyscraper and Central Intelligence, where the Millers dodgeball. Um, he also directed Netflix's Ren Notice with Dwayne Johnson, Ryan Reynolds, and Gal Gadot. So they're kind of keeping him in, in business with that. And Red Notice, I guess, is getting a, uh, getting, getting a major play from, from Netflix as well. Obviously, I mean, Johnson, Reynolds, and Godot. I mean, that's, that's a solid cast right there. Um, so, uh, Thurber will also co-write the new movie from scratch, uh, with one of his writing partners, uh, replacing the original script that was written by, uh, Raffi Duncans, who he's, he's mostly done a lot of TV series like Chuck and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, but he was working on that script with Leech, but obviously now they're, just redoing the whole script for those not in the know uh with the video game it is a post-apocalyptic action thriller set in the future where a virus is spread via paper money on black friday decimating new york city by christmas what's left of society has descended into chaos a group of civilians trained to operate in catastrophic times are activated to save who and what remains uh the game got a lot of love uh when it first came out especially the sequel so it's pretty popular amongst fans and it looks like it's finally hopefully finally getting made there's still no worry on when production is getting made oh uh by the way jake gyllenhaal and jessica chastain are attached to star in the movie they will also produce the movie so a lot of a lot of uh big power behind that um i'm looking forward to seeing kind of what happens with this um i haven't actually played i've played like a demo of the first game and i enjoyed it i just never bought it and played it maybe i'll go back and, and buy it now so kind of get a get a feel of what's going on with there but um uh, but yeah that's pretty i mean I, i'm I, I would have preferred david leach but um you know thurber thurber's fine i mean I, I didn't mind skyscraper i thought it was fine i didn't mind central intelligence um were the millers and dodge so we went from comedy to doing these kind of more action movies and obviously red notice again getting a lot of uh, getting a lot of pull from netflix but uh, maybe i'll just wait to to see what he does with with red notice and then make my decision from there David Finchner will finally get to direct an adaptation of Alex Nolet's French graphic novel, The Killer, which he has been developing for nearly 14 years. Uh, the movie was originally set, uh, set up at Paramount, but the movie has now moved over to Netflix, where Finchner has a four-year deal. In addition to this, Andrew Kevin Walker, who wrote Finchner 7, will write the script with production expected to start this September and Michael Fassbender is being eyed to star in the movie from Finchner himself. So that's that's pretty cool. The killer, for those who don't know anything about the graphic novel like I did, I never I never heard about this, uh, follows a cold-blooded assassin who starts to experience an existential crisis as he grows a conscience in a world where, with no moral compass. Uh, apparently Brad Pitt was at one point circling the role when the movie was still at Paramount, but now that it's moved on to Netflix, Finchner wants Fassbender, which, let's be honest, isn't that bad of a replacement. I mean, come on. Anyone's like, oh, no, I want Brad Pitt. No, come on. You got you get Michael Fassbender. Come on. Uh, Finchner has Mank on Netflix, which you can currently go watch. And uh, Fassbender uh, will be starring in the Next Goal Wins movie, uh, which will be directed by Taika Waititi, which I don't know if it's coming out this year, maybe next year. I don't think there's an actual release date for that movie yet. But uh, this is pretty cool. Um, I like this. Damon Finchner, Michael Fassbender, Finchner going back to the kind of gritty crime uh, movies and his 
based off a graphic novel. So, um, yeah, why not? All right. Um, so this was originally the biggest movie news item of the week. And so, again, like I mentioned earlier in the podcast, there was a movie news item that dropped right before I started recording. Um, so I'm going to talk about this first. Warner Brothers' hybrid release strategy might be spreading because this week Paramount Pictures announced that uh, their new releases will be streaming exclusively on its streaming service soon after their theoretical debut. So yes, moving forward, major tentpole Paramount movies will be streaming on Paramount Plus 45, uh, yeah, 45 days after they hit theaters, while the studio will look to a 30-day window for non-tentpole movies after the pandemic is over. So what does that mean exactly? That means that movies like A Quiet Place Part 2, Top Gun Maverick, and Mission Impossible 7, all set to come out this year, the major temple movies for Paramount Pictures, will stream 45 days after they are out, after they come out in theaters on Paramount+. Plus. Now, obviously, this is somewhat similar to what Warner Brothers is doing, like I mentioned, uh, having their movie, all their movies from 2020, uh, from this year, 2021, coming out in theaters uh, and their streaming service, HBO Max, on the same day. Now, after 30 days are up, the movies will be removed from HBO Max, presumably, you know, to be added again at a later time. Paramount Plus, by the way, is currently CBS All Access. They're going through a rebranding um, on the streaming service. So if you have CBS All Access already, you don't have to worry about downloading another streaming service. It's going to switch over to Paramount Plus um, next week on, on the 5th. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, no word yet on when the rollout of movies will begin, but Paramount does have a sci-fi action movie called Infinite with Mark Wahlberg and Dylan O'Brien coming out on May 28th. So maybe that could be the first movie that they come. Actually, the first movie is going to be the SpongeBob movie, but um, maybe after that, it will be this. Top Gun Maverick will come out a little bit after that. And of course, uh, Mission Impossible comes out uh, in November or supposed to come out in November. Uh, but on top of all that, Paramount also made a deal with Epix, which is owned by MGM, uh, which means that the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die, could be seen on Paramount Plus, or at least have the option to go there if they, you know, MGM wants to do that. Uh, the deal also helps Net, uh, Epix out, which will get an ex- uh, which will get some exclusive rights from Paramount Movies too by getting uh, like a ninety day uh, exclusive pay TV window, and vice versa because Paramount Plus will be getting access to older MGM movies as well. So it's an all-around kind of just work, you know, just deal. Uh, Paramount will be making original movies for, uh, will be making original movies to release on the streamer as well. The already announced Paranormal Activity retool that we talked about in the podcast last week will be released on Paramount Plus. They also announced a new Pet Cemetery movie, which will be an origin story uh, that will come out on Paramount Plus, and a movie called The In Between, which stars uh, Joey King, John Ortiz, and Kim Dickens about a teenage girl who survives a car accident that took the life of her boyfriend and then starts to believe that he's attempting to reconnect with her. And The Afterlife will also be released on Paramount Plus. So now we have Paramount doing this. Disney, of course, has Disney Plus, which will re- uh, release Raya and the Last Dragon next week. Warner Brothers has HBO Max, which will have Tom and Jerry come out this week, and of course, a slew of other movies. Um, for the rest of the year, Universal uh, uh, Pictures is putting their movies on premium VOD 70 days after their run, uh, after they come out in theaters, which uh, Universal doesn't really have anything big coming out. They already said that they're not going to release uh, F9 in premium VOD. They're going to stick that in theaters. So I don't know if they're going to do that. Who knows? Uh, other studios like Lionsgate, for example, which just released uh, Barb and Star Go to Bonavista, uh, Go to Vista Del Mar. Uh, recently also released their movies uh to vod so home releases are the rave right now um because we can't go to theaters especially if theaters aren't open because you know of covid there's a lot uh, of other stuff that paramount is doing um you know they just kind of just they just released this massive dump on uh, on the day they they announced this um i think it was wednesday um they just it was just a massive dump of news that they really are. It was like, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. I don't remember. Um, but it was, it, they were, you know, talking about their movies. They were talking about the TV shows. They were talking about the revivals that they're doing. This is big. And obviously people have had their, you know, opinions on stuff. And, uh, you know, once this news was announced, everyone was like, well, theaters are dead, I guess. No, they're not dead. Sell down. They're not dead yet. You know, the, the body's not even cold yet. Sell down. Um, but this is big. Uh, 
you know, there was always those rumors that came out that No Time to Die could get, you know, delayed. There was those rumors that um, No Time to Die, that, you know, MGM wanted to sell the the streaming rights to No Time to Die. Uh, I guess they don't have to worry about that anymore because they got Paramount Plus to, to release it on there. But I don't know. This is this is interesting. You know, we've, we've always anytime something big like this comes out, we I always talk about it and. I always say that uh, no matter what, if I can watch a movie at home or if I can watch a movie in theaters, if you can guarantee my safety in theaters or if I have to rent out a movie theater to be by myself and my family, maybe even my friends, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to a movie theater and watch movies, especially for the first time. If I have, if I can have that option and I can uh, be and be um, and be safe. I'm going to go watch a movie at a movie theater for the first time because I miss going to movie theaters. I don't, you know, that's, that's the thing that I miss. I miss going to movie theaters. Uh, I miss watching a movie on a big screen with my overpriced food (laughs) and drink and watching a movie for the first time, whether it's good or not. Yeah, I can do that at home. Sure. Of course I can do that at home. Do I always want to do that at home? No. You you think I want to watch Godzilla vs. Kong at home, even though I have a very good home theater system? No, I want to watch it for the first time on IMAX, on the biggest screen possible. That's what I want to do. I don't know if, if I, I just, I don't know, this, like, all of this, like, it was just an overflow of, of movie news from Paramount this week um, with this announcement. So, I don't know how people feel about this. I know people have opinions on this, but for me, honestly, I, it, it, I don't think it's, you know, I think this is just a reaction to the times obviously who knows if this was even gonna happen if rona wasn't around i mean this is obviously a clear move because of covid not because they have already probably already planned this out i mean you have to look at it that from from that perspective it's because people aren't going to the movie theater it's not because people are, aren't going to the movie theaters anymore they can't go to the movie theaters movie theaters aren't open and because there's covid out there so we don't know if this was going to be the plan from the beginning if it was going to be the plan from the beginning then i think we can have that conversation i don't think i I, maybe it's just me being naive maybe that's where it is maybe it's just me being naive where i don't think we would be having this conversation or these platforms would be doing this if it wasn't for covid if it wasn't for the fact that movie theaters aren't open and they still want to release their movies because they know fans are dying for new movies at home so that that's the conversation um, I, I think, and I don't know if I'm, I, I don't think I can have this conversation by myself. I need someone else here with me to bounce off of, but yeah, I, I, I don't, if, if this, we would be, th- then we would be having a different conversation if there wasn't coronavirus around, if they were going to do this anyway, then I think we can have that major con that major conversation of our movie theaters dead. Movie theaters are dead right now because there are, they aren't open and because, there's COVID and people aren't going to go to a movie theater if they know they can get the possibility of getting COVID. That's the, just, that's the truth. So I don't know. Uh, as for the move of Paramount, I think this is pretty cool. Uh, obviously the 45 day window is, is interesting. You know, they're not doing, they're not completely following Warner brothers. They're, they're still releasing their movies in theaters cause they want that revenue from theaters. Um, and then they're going to release it on, on the stream platform, which is fine. So yeah, I don't know. It, it's just, there's, it's, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I really don't know what to say other than what I've already said in a very disjointed fashion. I apologize. You'd think after five years, I would be able to put a complete sentence together. But no, no, I haven't. Which is probably why the podcast isn't where it's what's to be. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the final movie news <laughs> of the week. Uh, self-deprecation, my specialty. Uh, Deadline is reporting that a Superman reboot Yes, a Superman reboot is in the works at Warner Brothers, and it has a producer and a writer. The writer is author, I'm going to mispronounce his name, and I apologize, uh, Ta Nehesi Colts. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, will, will, and he will, they, he will be writing the movie and will be produced by J.J. Abrams, who will produce under his Bad Robot banner. There is no word on uh, what they're going to do with the reboot, but the outlet does say that Henry Cavill is eager to return, so maybe it's a soft reboot? Or something along those lines. Uh, the news just broke, so we'll obviously have to keep an eye on 
on what it is, if it's going to be a hard reboot with no Henry Cavill or it's going to be a soft reboot with Henry Cavill, who knows. Coates is attached to the Ryan Coogler drama called Wrong Answer, which itself is based on a true story about a math teacher in Atlanta who alters students' test grades to get the school for, for the school to get more funding, uh, which was, of course, a big scandal. Uh, Michael B. Jordan is actually attached to that as well. Uh, but Coates, on top of that, is a national correspondent for The Atlantic and covers cultural, and social, uh, cultural, social, and political issues, specifically that of African Americans and white supremacy. He's also written for other big uh, public, uh, publications out there. And he's also written nonfiction books. One of his books uh, actually won him the 2015 National Book Award for nonfiction. But if you're wondering why someone uh, like him is writing a Superman movie, a comic book movie, a movie about the possibly argu arguably the most well-known comic book character of all time, uh, Coates has written for Marvel Comics. Uh, he has written for Black Panther and Captain America uh, and even received a special thank you credit in Avengers Infinity War, Endgame and Black Panther. And what about Abrams? Why, why is he attached to this? Just because, you know, they wanted a big name producer attached? No. Abrams actually does have a history with Superman. And he also has a history with Warner Brothers and the DC Universe as a total. But he does have a history with Superman because he did a script for Superman called Superman Flyby, which of course never got made. But he has a script out there, uh, which I think you can probably find if you look in the right places. Uh, but Abrams, along with his Bad Robot banner, are also uh, also have a working relationship with Warner Brothers because Abrams is developing a Justice League Dark Universe for film and TV. So, yeah, uh, I'll let your comic book nerdy minds come up with something there uh, for for all of this. But this is this is big. This is huge. You know, there's been there's always been these rumors that maybe Warner Brothers is going to reboot Superman. Um, there was always that thing of whether or not Henry Cavill is going to come back or not. Uh, Cavill has said that he would be, you know, he wants to come back and do a Superman movie now with this movie news we don't know if it's again gonna be a full-blown reboot or just a reboot or just a soft reboot rather and they're just gonna uh, we don't know i, I don't know i i this is the second movie news item where i don't know what's gonna happen the news literally broke right as i was about to record and i had to stop and had to you know look at it and and write my little uh my little tidbits here but this is big um this is real big i i don't know what more to say? I, I hope, you know, I, I know, you know, with the Snyder Cut coming out, I think people want Cavill to stay as Superman. I don't think they want, you know, that drastic change already. You know, we're already losing, we're already losing Ben Affleck's Batman, which I know some people are happy about. Um, I'm not, I, I actually like Ben Affleck's Batman, but uh, I, I don't know what they're going to do with this. Uh, uh, reboot, the, the, the wording they use is reboot. So they don't use, they don't use like soft reboot or anything. I'm assuming it's probably a soft reboot, especially if Kevin wants to come back. But if they go full blown, uh, if they go full blown reboot, it's going to be very interesting to see how fans take that news and what exactly a full blown reboot of Superman uh, with their potentially somewhat already connected movies uh will play into um i hope they don't reboot it because I, I would love to see henry cavill do another solo superman movie so hopefully it's a soft reboot and he can come back uh and, and you know do it and I, I don't know i don't know again it just broke when i was about to record so uh i just i just wanted to bring that up and and and, and hope that you know they don't uh they don't go full blown hard reboot and uh and allow uh Henry Cavill to come back if he wants to come back. All right. Uh and that's it. That's all the movie news items that have come out this week. Uh at least at the time of this recording. Uh hopefully this podcast doesn't come out too late uh cuz again I am recording this on Friday early afternoon but uh uh thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. I very much appreciate it. Uh let me know what your highlight movie news item was uh and uh in the wherever you can whether if you're listening on youtube you can just hit that right there in the comment section if you're listening to this on apple podcast stitcher or spotify you can go to the social media accounts we have an instagram and a twitter all at movie pit pod uh right movie pit pod or at movie pit podcast i can't remember i can't even remember my own social handle uh well the instagram's new so i mean come, don't you gotta you can't can't blame me on that but uh but yeah uh thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast uh go down below check out all the links for that i'll have the trailers for army of the dead and luca down there as well go check those out if you haven't already and yeah 
that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you guys so much. Uh, here's to the five year anniversary of the podcast, which again is still mind boggling to me that I've been doing this podcast for five years, mostly by myself. Uh, I think that's, that's the bigger accomplishment here that I've been doing the podcast mostly by myself for five years. I've had people come on and, and help me out, which is nice, but for the most part, it's just been me. And, um, I could just be speaking to the void of the internet, uh, which is very sad and depressing now that I said that out loud. Uh, but I'm going to, all right, I'm going to go. Um, so thank you guys so much again for listening to the podcast. Hopefully you have a safe, fun weekend. Uh, be sure to continue wearing your mask, wash your hands. Don't be a dick. Don't, you know, it's, it don't just don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. It's not that hard. Be good people. And as always go watch some movies. Woo-hoo! Yeah. Give it up, movie!